Welcome to the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast. My name is Rob Murgatroyd, and I am a former doctor turned lifestyle entrepreneur. Each week, I interview some of the best minds on the planet on the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Today's episode is a mini-sode that we call Fried Dates with the Wife. In these mini-sodes, my wife Kim and I deconstruct the strategies that we've developed over the last decade to not only grow personally, but to turn our struggles into lessons and create fulfillment in all areas of our lives. Excuses are over. It's time to live. Let's dig into today's topic. All right, before we jump into this episode, I want to invite you to be considered for my Work Hard, Play Hard Mastermind by completing an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. So this mastermind is not like any mastermind you may have been to or heard of, I promise you. This mastermind is for six to seven figure entrepreneurs that are working too damn much and aren't taking the time to have amazing experiences around the world with an incredible tribe of people. So every 100 days or so, I drop you into new experiences that are specifically designed to elevate your thinking, to give you new ideas. Look, you get your best ideas not staring at a computer. And actually, this is the way high-level people really collaborate with each other. They do it over a glass of champagne, watching the sunset in the south of France. So if you are ready to do some fun stuff around the world and really, really want to level up your tribe in one shot, fill out an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. We'll jump on a call and we'll see if it's a good fit. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Well, Kimberly Barry Bellini, how are you? Barry Bellini. You are Barry Bellini. How are you today? Am I drinking on the job? You're drinking on the job. I'm drinking beer. Wouldn't want to be ya. <laughs> wouldn't want to be ya. That's one of your new products, uh, isn't it? I love this thing. It's like a sparkling energy drink. It's freaking amazing. So what I wanted to talk about today is, as many of you know, I am a big push planner. We... Are a yeah, don't very, forget me. We are a very big push planner family. And what I've come to the conclusion on with the push planner is that it works extremely well for what it does. It helps you take a giant goal and your other goals, gain clarity, compress it within 90 days and accomplish it, as well as um, give you an area to create notes, an area to um, organize or record the food you eat, the water you drink, how much sleep you get, how much fasting you're doing. Those two things, goals and notes, extremely, extremely good. But we were in Italy with our friends, Darren and Tony, And I noticed that they had these two planners and I'm looking at them. I'm like, all right, you know, I'm like one of these guys that like see things like that. You're like Like, a planner, a holic. Yeah, I start to get like really excited, like little butterflies. Like when I, like when I met my wife, like Mm -hmm. butterflies like that, right? Is that what they're calling it these days? So I was like, what's that? And he said, oh, it's an Evo planner. And she said, oh, it's the best you don't know about it. Now it pisses me off that they have a planner that I don't know about, (laughs) number one. I was like, what is it? And I looked at his and I looked at hers and they were completely different. And I was like, same, you know, same book looking on the outside, you know, identical, but on the inside, the guts of it was radically different. And I said, explain it to me. And I said, well, you have to take a test. It's a free test. Just go to Evo, just Google Evo. I don't know what the link is. Just Google it. (laughs) Google like Evo planner. And you Don't take- Don't you love how he tells you to Google? Cause you couldn't have figured that one out. You take the test, right? And the test will come back and it will tell you what you are. So at Lump said, I think it's a four categories, right? There's an architect, an explorer, you know, Christopher Columbus. I don't know what they're called, but they're all these different things. And it's how your brain processes information. And what I love about it is it processes information in a completely different way from your neighbor, you know, unless your neighbor thinks exactly like you do. So I was like, okay, well, how do I coordinate this push planner in with this thing? And do I really need two of them? And so I struggled back and forth with this. And I was like, do I need it? Do I not need it? And what I found is that at the beginning of the day, until around noon, or until I accomplish my push actions, I use my push planner. And at the end of the day, I use the Evo planner. Now, 
why do you need to use the Evo Planner? And for me, the reason is it addresses areas that the other one just doesn't address. And so I want to mention a couple of things that I think are going to be useful. At the end of the day, you have to score yourself and you have what they call a workflow score. So it's a scale of one to five, how was your workflow? And it addresses the following areas. Area number one is gratitude. Were you in gratitude for the day? Number two is most important. Did you accomplish your most important task? Three is did you do your wellness, whatever that is, whatever you decide it is for the day? And number four, order and balance. Now this is mine. Everybody's is gonna be a little bit different. And I'll talk about order and balance in a second. And the last one is, did you do your ritual? So every 30 days, you pick a ritual. Whatever that ritual is, you know, it could be, we'll use a simple one. It could be like making your bed, right? You, let's say that you're trying to like, you know, you've read somewhere that, you know, people who make their bed in the beginning of the day have a great day. So think about, Did you do the ritual? And so you score it every single day. And what I like about it is many, many things. But one of the things is sometimes as you go through the day, you don't want to be carrying a planner around with you. You don't want to look like you're a CPA that's showing up at the gym, right? You don't want to go out to dinner with a friend and it's like, you you know, you just happen to be like, you know, there's things that you want to get done, but you got to lunch somewhere with somebody. You got to dinner somewhere with somebody. So they created this card and this card you can carry with you, it's like its like an Evo on the go, which I really, really <laughs> love. Well, wait a minute. Can I pause you for a second? Yeah. I, because I don't Evo, I, like, I have nothing really to contribute to your conversation. But I do um, <laughs> your conversation with yourself. <laughs> but what, what's your, your type? Um, I am an architect. Okay. What is Darren? Do you mm, remember? I forgot. Do you no. remember what I am? No. All right. Good. No. All right, that was awesome. Do you know who else are architects? No. Um, Tony Robbins. See? Henry Ford. See? Rosa Parks, Michelle Obama, Ariana Huffington, and George Washington. And what I'd like to know is, did they do the test? I don't really know, but here's, here's what, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure this was just on Kickstarter. <laughs> did, did they go back to Rosa Parks and just make her take so, the okay, test? Let me see. Let me just see if this is accurate. Your core needs, one is high standards of your work. True. Number two, stability and security. Oh my God. Yes, certainty junkie. Number three, impact and tangible results. Yep. Four, loyalty and trust. Yep. Five, understanding details in a clear, organized way. Oh, nailed you. Nailed you. Let's look at you. You want to see your weaknesses? Mm -hmm. You struggle to start when there's risk. (laughs) You need lots of details to feel confident. You're highly perfectionist. You get stuck once things are perfect and polished. Getting stuck once things are perfect and polished. Okay. Getting lost in details and forgetting the big picture. That is definitely it. Um, So the planner is designed around all of these crazy things that I have. Okay. I strongly recommend that people go out and do it, but there's two areas that I wanted to share that I am integrating into the planner that I think whether you get this Evo planner or not, you should consider these areas. So the first one is a Joe Dispensa-ism. In the morning, make a list of what are the thoughts that you want to stay away from. So it's very, very different than <laughs> what, you're, what you're doing. What are you laughing at? I'm laughing because if I have to make a list of the thoughts I want to stay away from, it's like saying, don't think of a purple squirrel. That's exactly the point. Let me explain why. Okay. So- Here's, here's the assignment. Number one, you take out a journal. And number two, you ask yourself, what are these thoughts that I just have to stay away from today? You list them all out. What that does is it lists for you the old circuits that are connected to your old self. Number three, you ask yourself, what are some of the behaviors, list them all out, that I don't want to do today? Number four, what are the emotions that are gonna bring me to a lower level? So here's why you do this. You wanna commit the entire list to memory to review it over and over again. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to see yourself when you do those things. When you view yourself doing this, you're gonna objectify 
your subjective self. So in other words, instead of going on autopilot doing those things, you're gonna be able to objectively look at yourself doing it because you're doing it. So you're making yourself aware of behaviors that you don't wanna do because you're bringing awareness to the fact that you're doing them. So you're no longer the old self or you identify that you're trying to separate from the old self and you're beginning to become aware of who you no longer wanna be. This makes you conscious that you no longer want to go unconscious of the behaviors that you're doing. The trick is that you can't judge yourself or have a reaction to it, or you're gonna step into the old self. So if you're, if you're like, you know, I wanna make sure that I tell my, my wife I love her every day, right? We'll use something simple. If you don't do it, and then you start beating yourself up for the fact that you didn't do it, then you're going right back into the old self. But if you're like, I'm gonna kiss my wife and tell her how much I love her every day, and you don't do it, you go, huh. Okay, that was the thing, that was the behavior I said I was gonna make sure that I did today, you can start to have an awareness of it. So the idea is that you keep doing it until your body finally surrenders, which liberates energy, and it will help you to release those old habits and emotions. So I'll give you an example. So what's on my list today is I'm training myself to stay away from worry, perfecting, and any uh, feeling, feeling, I wrote feeling negative towards my goals. So in other words, I don't wanna look and go like, I can, I can look at all of my goals and go like, well, you know, I'm not accomplishing it. So I'm saying to myself, I am gonna keep myself away from that feeling and energy. And so when I start to feel a dip and like, oh God, you know, I, I put this goal out and I'm not accomplishing it. I'm like, oh, there I go again, I'm doing it. So I'm being aware of what I want to stay away from. And what's interesting about it is it's almost like I'm outside of my body and I'm watching myself react and do something and I'm having an objective view of what I'm doing, which is really just interrupting the pattern. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, I'm telling you, like the, this. I'm glad this is on your brain because I'm in awe right now of what has to go on to, <laughs> to harness your brain. All right. God, the, I feel like my book would be empty. All right, here's, here's the last one. Train yourself to have sustained heart cohesiveness by having an elevated emotion around your goal. Okay, so- Explain. All right. Do you remember going to a Tony Robbins event where he has you put your hands on your heart and he's telling you that your your heart essentially has its own minds, right? When you do the, uh, what's the- uh, What's the priming. Uh, the priming process, right? That is when you go into your heart for gratitude and those kind of things, what you're doing is you're creating a cohesiveness with, in your heart with your brain. The way you get into that cohesiveness is by stepping into a state of a higher emotion. And a, one of the higher emotions that everybody's aware of is gratitude, right? Happiness, excitement, joy. So the idea is to get into your heart, visualize happiness, joy, excitement, and then let that expand out into your body. If you don't go into an elevated emotion tied to the goal that you're working on, then you're not gonna be attracting it because you're, what is attracting you to the goal or what's, what's bringing the goal in is your energy matching the energy of the goal. So if you step into, you know, the dream body that you want to have and you're excited that you have it, your brain can't tell the difference between what's real and imagined. And so you start bringing it in. So every day when I write down my goals, I think about what are the, ener what are the emotions and the energy that's associated with accomplishing the goal. And I do the best that I can to step into those energies to attract the goal even more. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm just trying to get through my push planner. I'm like, <laughs> how, what, how, do you, is, how do you have time in your day to I get do up two hours all early. of this? I get up two hours early to do shit like oh that. Oh my God. So look, this is a work in progress. This is my uh, part of my fall collection. I don't, <laughs> I don't have the Evo planner worked out. I don't know if I'm gonna kick the Evo planner to the door and say, screw it, this is too much work. But if, you're, if you are looking to create something that, addresses the other area of your life. Let me tell you why this was such a big thing. Because when I saw our friend Darren in Italy, he was 15 pounds lighter. 
And I said, dude, you look great. What are you doing? He said, I've been working out. And I can't, I haven't been able to get this guy to work out in 20 years. And I was no, like- he worked out once and he broke a rib. And I asked him, I was like, why are you working out? He said, the Evo Planner. I'm like, why did the Evo Planner do it? He said, because it has an app that you have to scan, which is what I was just describing. You have to scan this and then you have to address whether or not you did the health goal that you said you were gonna do for the day. And then it stats and maps how you're doing. So out of the, you know, out of the, uh, the one, two, three, four, uh, five areas, that you have to do each day. If you don't put the circle into the wellness area when you scan the app, it shows a downward trends. And he was watching all the areas of his life were going up, right? All these different categories every day and every, you do it, you scan it once a week and once a day. They were all going up, but his health was going down. And for him, having that statistic is what, it took to unlock the motivation to be able to accomplish it. So look, where everybody's a little bit different and everybody works- Hence um, why the Evo that's has That's why the Evo has your, it. Your brain. So I thought we'd do a little bit of a different podcast today to talk about a different planner that I'm experimenting with that might help some people. There you have it. Well, that was fascinating. Is, I that mean, it? is it over? Yeah, I mean, it's over for me because I don't even know. Like my brain is exploded at this moment. Um, mind blown? Mind blown. Look, it took you four years to get me to use the push journal. Like, <laughs> so, then, so then by the time I am 57, <laughs> you'll be using the Evo Planner. So go check it out. Let me know what you think. Just wanted to throw, I like to, I like to share things it's as I'm doing them. Uh, yeah, you seem fascinating. Um, <laughs> have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. All right, thanks for listening. If you love this episode and you know someone that needs some help in either stepping up their work hard game or their play hard game, it would mean the world to me if you shared this podcast with them to help me get this movement out there. So if you like what you heard, head on over to iTunes, take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and I will be forever grateful. So until the next episode, excuses are over. It's time to live.